Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here and welcome back to some more Eternal Gameplay. Today we're going to be running some games with Rally Queen, specifically the build that the Ski J has posted on Eternal Warcry that he used to climb to Masters this season. This is an extremely popular deck on the ladder right now in various uh, iterations. A lot of them have very much in common. You can kind of mix and match to your heart's desire. The list that we're running is running four Grenadan drones, two creatures for the price of one, four Knife Jack, a one cost 2-2 two -two that hurts you when you play it, four Oni Ronin, two one for one Warcry, four Pyro Knight, two one for one with Overwhelm, and we can pay six to give it plus four plus four, for Ruthless Strangers, a 1-1 one, one for 1, however that's a little deceptive as it gives Strangers plus 1 attack, so it's actually a 2-1 one for 1, or if you happen to play 2 of them, then they're, then they're both 3 ones, and so on and so forth. For Torch, deal 3 damage for 1. Argonport Instigator, 2 cost 3-3, three, three. when a unit dies it deals 1 damage to its owner. For Rapid Shot, 2 cost Fast Spell, give a unit plus 4 attack and quick draw this turn. For Assembly Line, 3 cost spell that plays out 3 1 1 Grenadines. For Rally, a 3 cost fast spell that gives our units plus 2 attack this turn. For Shadowlands Guide, a 3 cost 3 1 that when we play it, we get to play a unit with cost 1 or less from our Void. For Bandit Queen, a 4 cost 3 2 with charge when we summon it, our units get plus 1 attack and quick draw this turn. 2 Lurking Sanguinar, a 5 cost 4-2 with life still. However, it's free if 2 units dealt damage to the enemy player this turn, so we hardly ever have to pay the full 5 for that. Also, it combos well with Shadowland Guides. If it's in our graveyard, we can still trigger the cost reduction there, and then use Shadowland Guides to play Lurking Sanguinar from our graveyard. The power base is 6 Fire Sigils, 2 Granite Monuments, 5 Shadow Sigils, 4 Seed of Chaos, 4 Stone Scar Banner, and 4 Diplomatic Seals. I will have a list that you can copy and import into the client in the description below, and also a link to the page on Eternal Warcry where Ski J has posted this list himself if you would like to look at that version. But right now, we are going to play some games. All right, this is a perfectly reasonable hand. We will keep it. We are on the play also, which is very good for this deck. We are going to lead off with the Oni Ronin, which could die before we get a chance to attack with it, but hopefully not. Looks like our opponent is also on fire and shadow. Well, first of all, we're going to attack, get our war cry going, deal two damage. Then we will drop two more creatures. We would like to draw at least one more power card so that we can play our assembly line. Looks like Vara's Favor is going to kill our Oni Ronin there. I guess that will do. Go ahead and attack. We could have also rapid shot to deal four extra damage, but I think deploying our war cried stranger had more value there. Argonport instigator for the opponent. Well, they're not going to be happy here if they choose to block. Because we will rapid shot and ours will live. That's barring them having a torch to kill it in response, which it looks like they do not. So their instigator will deal one damage to them. We have them to 12. You hear, see here the strangers feeding off of each other. Looks like they're playing a similar deck and just got a slower start than we did. Go ahead and play that out in case we do want to rally. We will attack. Cabal Countess, okay. I think we're just going to let that happen. And then we will play out our Shadowlands guide and get our bigger stranger back. Impending Doom. 
Okay. So they're playing a bigger version of this sort of deck here. Probably not running rallies or things like assembly line. I think we're going to attack with everything. If they block the knife jack with the impending doom, then we won't be able to take it out. But it is dealing one damage to them at the end of their turn, so it's not that big a deal. I think we will rally here to kill the impending doom and get an extra couple of damage in. And pass. We could have also just let our stuff die and then played out assembly line. They do have a bit of a wall here, unfortunately. Seat of Chaos is okay. Uh, assembly line plus Bandit Queen should sew this game up. They can't kill us, so we will definitely get another turn. They don't have enough blockers, so they are definitely dead. Hopefully the rest of our games will be just as smooth. Alrighty, we really can't keep this hand. Uh, maybe if that was a fire sigil I would consider it, but we need to toss it back. Um... I mean, that's better. It's not a heck of a lot better. We've got a pretty slow hand here, which could spell doom for us. Uh, I think we will go ahead and play out the Stone Scar banner. We will definitely want to make fire with this. Uh, our deck requires two fire and only one shadow. And we will play out the instigator, which will probably just die. Or not. Okay, I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's attack for three. And we could play out the stranger, but I think the assembly line is a better play here. And we have, after next turn, the ability to cast pretty much everything in our deck if we top deck a bandit queen. So slay on our instigator. Looks like we're probably against army or a similar controlly type list. Let's go ahead and attack. We probably want to go all in on Rally next turn, as at that point they will be able to replenish their power and potentially harsh rule us. Alright, Slay here. Yep. Right, we want to torch their face. They didn't play a fourth power, so that's good for us. They're definitely not going to harsh rule us come next turn. Which kind of makes me not want to rally. Let's see. It would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're three short of killing them. I think what we want to do is play our instigator and attack. And we're going to rapid shot for an extra four damage. And that sets us up, up to win next turn. And the opponent has had enough. Okay, um, we are on the draw. We have a number of things we can play. I think we're going to risk and keep this. Probably should mulligan. But since we're on the draw, we have a greater chance of being able to hit our power cards. In this instance, I think we'll lead off with Ruthless Stranger, as it will be a three power creature on our turn two. And we'll attack for more than the Oni Ronin will. And well, that is not a power might really regret keeping this hand if we don't manage to draw a second and even third power fairly soon here. Don't kill my stranger. Come on, have a heart. Damn it. Yep, Varus Favor's really good versus this deck, and unfortunately we did not draw another power. 
In this case, I am going to play out the Oni Ronin, since his buddy bit the dust. Tranquil Scholar, no life force. He looks like Aegis. Perfectly fine with that. See if they want to trade. And it seems they do. So we will continue to play our one drop since we're not in a position to be able to double spell. Alrighty, yeah, we're going to lose this. Almost certainly, especially since that has Aegis. It also has Revenge. Yep, I highly expected them to block. Guess we'll continue to play our very small, mediocre creatures. <laughs> at least at this point in the game, they're small and mediocre. And they immediately get the Alchemist back, which is horrible for us. I mean, that does help a little bit, I suppose. Um, though we can't play out our Instigator since we don't have Shadow. Yeah, keeping this hand was really bad. And what's even worse is we have to waste uh, an extra torch here to deal with that. Can't afford to leave it out if we want to have any chance at all at turning this game around. Which, in all honesty, at this point, with them with 5 power already and at 30 life, we're just, we're not going to. Yep. Yeah, didn't expect them to block there. They have a massive life advantage on us. Got a guy here that's going to be dealing four damage to us. Well, that's what happens. We took a risk and got very punished. Uh, this game is over. We're going to go ahead and concede, not waste the opponent's time. Alright, let's not make any more stupid mulligan decisions like this. We definitely want to mulligan this. That's a bit better. We are one power off of Bandit Queen. Uh, we will lead off with Seal for Fire and play out Ruthless Stranger just in case we top deck another Stranger that will make it able to swing for one more damage than Knife Jack would have been able to. All right, nothing from the opponent. Looks like they may be on Praxis something or other, mid-range ramp, something along those lines. We get in for two, then we will go ahead and play out Knife Jack. Still have the ability to fire off a torch if we need to. All right, it is indeed mid-range slash ramp. Uh, we'll hold on to the torch for now. Well, Shadowland Guide is not nearly as good when there's nothing in our graveyard. So, do we play it? I think we still do. They have the potential to play a Sandstorm Titan this turn. Though without the second time, they're not going to be able to. 3, 5, well, Rapid Shot is useful here. I could also play the Bandit Queen, but that seems less good. Let's go ahead and attack. Alright, we will Rapid Shot here. Killing uh, Diogo and letting our Shadowlands Guide survive. Then we will still hold up the Torch. What would be great for us here if they is if they played something that we could torch and then Bandit Queen, but that is not the case. So now we want a power card, which we didn't get. So for the moment, we're going to play assembly line and just pass. We're not going to suicide our stuff in. Try to set up for an alpha strike. Yep, no blocks. 
Titan has endurance, so it can attack and block. Okay, that is a great target for our torch. Now we will Bandit Queen and deal as much damage as we can, and hopefully it's enough to seal the deal. Didn't bother to do the math. But it looks like we got there, so cool. All right, unfortunately this hand is a little slow, but I don't think it's worth throwing back, so we're going to keep it. Going to be kind of a turn behind on all of our plays since the Stone Scar banner is depleted. Since we don't have a, a unit next turn, if our uh, both our Grenadin drones survive, then we'll be able to play the other one undepleted and double spell, or, you know, single Argon Port Instigator, as the case may be. Drawing a Lurking Sanguinar would be awesome. Well, actually, I was misthinking that. We get to double spell this turn. We can go Grenade and Drone. That gives us a unit, so this one is undepleted. And we will play out our Knife Jack, since it's more resilient. They do have Shadow, so Vara's Favor could very well be a thing, and I would rather have one of our drones Vara's Favored than our Pyro Knight. But they do not do that. Ooh, got uh, Time and Justice as well. Uh, let's go ahead and attack. And we will play out the Instigator. This tends to be a really good deck to climb the ladder quickly. Uh, the games, as you have seen, win or lose, are generally very, very fast, so you can grind off a ton of games very quickly. Also, it tends to have a pretty high win percentage. Okay, so we are going to attack. The question is, if they block right here, do we Rapid Shot to protect our guy? And honestly, I don't think we do. Just let it die. Then we will play out Pyro Knight and pass back. We would like to draw at least a third power to bring these cards online. Looks like that may not be in the cards. I highly suspect that they will have Ion to ambush into play here, but Rapid Shot should help us deal with that. And nope, just Banish. That is fine. We could Rapid Shot for the extra four damage, but I think I want to play Pyro Knight out instead, so... We will do that. Sandstorm Titan. Very glad I held on to this rapid shot now. If they block the Grenadin drone, we can't really get them with the rapid shot, but otherwise we can. And they are doing us the favor of blocking that way. We could have also Rapid Shot on one of these other things and put them to one. However, I value having our creatures out a great deal, especially since we don't have an actual torch in hand to finish the job. It's right here. Well, they healed for one there, and then conceded. Okay, well, I think this is keepable. Luckily, we are on the play again, which helps. Uh, we can't play out the Seed of Chaos because Diplomatic Seal does not count as a sigil. Uh, we will make fire, and we're going to play out a Grenadin Drone because it's more resilient since it gives us two creatures instead of just the one of Oni Ronin. Also, if we top deck Lurking Sanguinar, we can play it for free if they both survive. Okay, also Fire and Shadow showing for the opponent. Let's attack. Play our seat and play out an Oni. Unfortunately, we didn't draw a power card to make our seat come in undepleted, but such is the way of things. 
All right, Oni Ronin is gone. We will continue to attack. And now we get to double spell, which is great. Quarry from the opponent. So this may be the Mauler's deck, which actually has not a great matchup with what we're playing. Um, so we only have them to 21. We can do six, seven, eight, nine, 10 here, putting them to 11. Could just rapid shot. It's only two less damage. Then we have torch up. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to attack. We're going to rapid shot on one of these there. They have nothing available. So no chance of what we use the rapid shot on dying. Then we'll pass. We have torch available if need be. Madness. Makes me think they have a way to sack it. Combust. Kind of makes me want to kill it. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to torch it. That way they don't have the opportunity to combust and kill another one of our things. Well, that is a bit of a late draw, but... It is what we have, so that's what we do. And this game feels like it may be slipping away from us. The madness there was really bad. Of course, they don't have anything else. At least they didn't play anything. So maybe we can pull this out. Okay. All right. So we could play this and put them to three. Uh, I don't think we will. We'll just do our two. Play out our stranger and set up for the win on next turn, perhaps. And it looks like we got there. All right, friends, that was a pretty good session. One lost thanks to our own bad decision making, keeping a horrible hand, which honestly could have worked out if we'd drawn uh, another power or so. Still, this deck is incredibly consistent. It does sometimes just lose to its own bad draws, but it is quick. It has a pretty high win percentage and overall lets you grind out a ton of games in a very short amount of time. So if you're looking to climb the ladder rapidly, I would highly recommend this build. Again, the list is in the description in a form that you can just copy and import into your client. Also a link to the original post of the deck by the Ski J on Eternal Warcry if you'd prefer to see a more visual representation of the deck. But that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below, it really does help tremendously. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.